Welcome! Today we're going to talk about this lovely 2021 Tesla Model 3 long range all wheel drive that we have for sale. We've sold hundreds of Teslas at our store. Uh, we have a very big pre owned business and we do well with pre owned Teslas. Uh, the 21 long range all wheel drive is a great Tesla to consider if you're considering a used Tesla. Um, if you can afford the slightly higher price, I would recommend looking at a 2021 or newer Model 3 for a number of reasons. And they have become a lot more affordable over the last couple of years. A couple of years ago, a Model 3 long range, a lightly used one or a new one, was well over $60,000. Now, uh, you can find one like this uh, on the pre-owned market for a little over $30,000. I don't get too much in the pricing of our vehicles because we change our price on a weekly basis. So if I say it on this video, uh, it might not be accurate a week from now. And maybe someone's watching this video five years in the future. And then definitely prices will be out of whack. Okay, so first and foremost, why would a 21 or newer Model 3 be a good choice for you? Uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, the Model 3 first came out in 2017, um, and then uh, it got its first uh, major update in 2021. The biggest uh, reason uh, to consider a 2021 is uh, this right here. If we see over here, we go cabin heater it says heat pump well 2021 was the first year that tesla started adding the octo valve heat pump to the model 3. Uh, it's a very uh, ingenious design um, and it makes the model 3 a lot more efficient just like a heat pump in your house can make it more efficient for cooling and heating likewise the heat pump added to an ev makes it a lot more efficient because the thing with evs is that they need to take energy from the battery to heat the vehicle unlike a conventional gas powered vehicle which uses the heat from the engine uh, to heat the vehicle so that's just a happy dividend of having an internal combustion engine is you can use the heat from it to heat the cabin unfortunately you can't do that with an ev you have to take some energy from the battery to heat the vehicle but having a the most efficient way of possible uh, uh you know of using heat through a heat pump or generating heat that makes it much more efficient especially in colder weather when it gets below so that first started popping up in the, in the model 3 for 2021. Another reason is this nice redesigned center console. It's a little bit nicer design uh, than the previous one. I have a 2019 Model 3, and I definitely would prefer this. Uh, you have this nice wireless charging pad. Uh, another reason is the addition of a heated steering wheel. Uh, 2021 was the first year you could get a heated steering wheel on a Tesla. Pretty cool way to operate the HVAC system. Pretty intuitive. Um, and then uh, you have, we have rear heated seats as well. There's a dog mode. So if you want to keep your pooch in the car when it's hot out, it'll, you can put it in dog mode and the thing will come up on the screen. Hey, it's a comfortable 76 degrees in here. My owner returns soon, so you don't have to worry about people breaking your windows on a hot day. <laughs> Pretty cool. And we can see that the majority of the functionality is in this screen. And some people might ridicule uh, Tesla for taking away hard buttons and stuff and having the integrated in the screen but it actually makes a lot of sense because when you have hard buttons they're there forever you can't update them <laughs> tesla uh they can update stuff constantly they since this car has uh come out it's gained features they've added new uh software to it new uh you know ways to watch videos uh you can't do this while you're moving but you can watch you know netflix tiktok you can play video games so they're constantly adding stuff over their updates and then uh, a lot of recalls can also get taken care of with software updates. Recently they did a recall, I guess the uh, DOT didn't like the size of like the ABS and some of the warning lights here. Uh, normally if you had a dashboard <laughs> with lights like that in a conventional car, you'd have to break the, take the car into a dealership and do a retrofit to the dashboard to have those larger uh, icons. Uh, with Tesla, it's just a software update. So, you know, people, you know, t Tesla, people love to put Tesla in the news uh, where, you know, another type of vehicle wouldn't be newsworthy. Tesla is definitely newsworthy for things like that. So whenever there's a recall out there, like, oh, there's another recall for Tesla. But the thing with Tesla is 90% of the time when there's a recall, it's just a software update. So you hit a button on your phone and then the car updates itself and the recall is taken care of. Where with a lot of other vehicles, like Toyota had a almost a 2 million uh, unit recall on the RAV4 not too long ago. And yeah, you actually had to bring that vehicle into the dealership, uh, which is a lot more work than just hitting a button on your phone and having it download in your driveway. <laughs> Uh, so people can be very dramatic in situations like that talking about Tesla. There's a lot of Tesla misinformation out there. 
Uh, but we've dealt with so many Teslas. Uh, we know the uh, pros and the cons. And uh, so hopefully we can put some of those uh, misconceptions at rest in uh, this video. Okay, so moving along, uh, we have this infinitely configurable screen. Uh, you have uh, games and stuff. You have the toy box. You uh, also, um, with the newer Teslas, I think it was 2020, they added the megaphone update so you can actually talk through the horn in a scary voice. <laughs> uh, you can make the horn sound like a fart. You can make it sound like a goat. Uh, pretty cool stuff. You can play ambient music through the horn or music. So if you're you know hanging outside having you know a backyard barbecue queue and your Tesla's nearby, you can actually play music through the horn. <laughs> it's not as good as a Bluetooth speaker, but it's pretty cool. Uh, so another feature that they added for 2021 is a power trunk. Before it was manually opening and closing. Now you have a power operated trunk. Uh, so that's pretty cool. They do have a retrofit, you know, for all the Teslas if you want a power trunk, but they charge like seven or eight hundred dollars for that. Really a nice looking car. And another thing that rolled out in 2021. See, a lot of changes for 2021 on the Model 3 is it this Tesla glass. It's a double pane glass that has a sound deadening material sandwiched in between, which makes it a lot quieter. This is proprietary glass developed by Tesla, and it makes a big difference. It's noticeably quieter in a 21 Model 3 versus an older one that doesn't have that Tesla glass. We have a frunk, extra storage space. This came in handy. We went to Costco, we actually bought more stuff. We have a van, but for some reason we took the Model 3. We had a little bit too much stuff that would fit in the trunk, but luckily I had the frunk, so I was able to fit everything in the vehicle. It's also a safety feature because you have a crumple zone 60% larger than a gas car. In fact, when the Model 3 was first uh, crash tested by the uh, NHTSA, it uh, was the safest vehicle they ever tested, the lowest probability of injury out of almost any other vehicle on the road when they tested the Model 3 or pretty much every other vehicle. And even though the Model 3 is a compact, um, it's still pretty spacious, I'm six foot two. Uh, in a lot of compact cars, it'd be rather uncomfortable back here, but I have plenty of leg room, headroom back here. Um, definitely not as spacious as the Model Y, uh, which is about 20% bigger, but the Model 3 is really uh, spacious in the back seat and a lot of space in the front seat. Uh, since we're not hampered by the conventional design of a gas-powered car with an engine, uh, drive shaft, an exhaust system, uh, it allows for a lot more interior space and cargo space. The trunk is noticeably larger compared to gas vehicles. And even in here, we have more storage space. Normally there'd be a gas tank and an exhaust system here, but since this is an EV, we don't have that. All right, how about we take this around the block for a spin and check out another feature that's really cool that I'll talk to you about shortly. All right, we're gonna take this 2021 Model 3 Long Range out for a spin. So the extra feature that this one has is the acceleration boost upgrade. It's a $2,000 in-app purchase. You get a software update and it unleashes about 100 horsepower, lowering the zero to 60 from a little under five seconds to 3.7 seconds. So it's approaching the zero to 60 of what you get with the Model 3 Performance, uh, which is zero to 60 in like 3.1 seconds versus 3.7. Uh, they pretty much use the same batteries and drive units in the Performance version of the Model 3. It's just software, uh, which unleashes the uh, extra horsepower. Obviously, the Model 3 performance, you get other things like a lower suspension, uh, you know, higher top speed, uh, bigger brakes, things like that. But uh, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't go over 80 miles an hour or drive on racetracks that often, you know, uh, zero to 60 uh, is pretty close to what you get with the Model 3 performance. Uh, the top end acceleration is a little bit better than the Model 3 performance, but like I said, if you don't drive over 100 miles an hour, you're really not going to notice a difference. Very quiet and smooth in a Tesla, a very welcome place to be. I have the heated steering wheel on. We have dual motors, there's an engine, uh, an engine. There's a motor in the front and the back making it all well drive, but also making it really quick because it's like having two engines and we have a green light. So I'm just gonna punch it once I get it straight and let's see how this thing accelerates. Whoa, yeah, this thing, it's like your own personal roller coaster ride. Well, it's not, you know, plaid level acceleration, it's still really fun. Uh, it's, a, it's a totally different sensation than a gas vehicle because you have instant thrust. 
Uh, normally with a gas engine, there's no one behind me, so I'm gonna slow it down a little bit, test that roll and acceleration. For instance, uh, if you wanna, you know, step on the gas right now in a performance vehicle, there'll be a momentary hesitation while the transmission hunts for the right gear, the engine has to rev to the right power band, but with an electric vehicle, you just punch it in its instant thrust. Pretty amazing. Now let's talk about the autopilot. This is a traffic aware cruise control which allows the vehicle to brake and accelerate in its own lane. It's not full self-driving. Uh, it does a very good job following the uh, uh, gentle bends in the highway. And you can also use it on regular roads too. There's a lot of ADAS systems that will only engage like over 36 miles an hour. They won't let you use them on regular roads. But the autopilot um, allows you to do that. You can engage it all the way to zero miles an hour. And um, it's an absolute godsend. I am so spoiled by the autopilot that if I have to run any errands for work, I'm the used car manager, I can pretty much drive any vehicle, but instead of taking like the fancy Range Rover or the Porsche Macan GTS, I'll take a Model 3 or Model Y with the autopilot. Uh, it's not gonna stop for stop signs, it's not gonna stop for red lights, it's not full self-driving. You need to keep your hand on the wheel and pay attention. But you can see even on roads like this, it does a pretty good job uh, you know, following the curves and uh, following the bends in the road. It's not going to sh take sharp hairpin corners, but even in a situation like this where a lot of ADAS systems couldn't handle it, it doesn't get tripped up. See this construction here? But watch, it's going to do a pretty good job staying in its lane. But uh, don't get too overly confident. Uh, it can get tripped up, so you still need to pay attention. You need to keep your eyes on the road, your hand on the wheel, and be ready to intervene. Oh. <laughs> And every once in a while it'll give you a nag saying put your hand in the wheel pay attention uh things like that but we can see here it's not full self-driving it's not going to stop for red lights it's not going to stop for stop signs you need to do that yourself but in stop and go traffic uh driving on a nice country back road you can get a lot of mileage out of the autopilot you can drive for quite a while on it sometimes before you need to disengage it for a situation like this <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Love that acceleration. All right, well that uh, pretty much ends our little drive and walk around in this 2021 Model 3 long range. Uh, if you're considering an EV, you know, Tesla is probably one of the best EVs out there. They've made more than anybody. You have the amazing supercharging network, uh, which is second to none. You can use your navigation system and you can pretty much drive almost anywhere in the US uh, with a supercharging network. The car will have your back. Like for instance, if I wanted to drive to Spokane right now, oh, we don't have enough range to make it there. I just put it in the navigation system and the trip planner will figure out the whole trip for me. It'll tell me where I need to charge for, how long to charge for. So I'll arrive at North Bend with 16%, I'll charge for 20 minutes and I'll go into Tw Quincy with 14%, charge for 15 minutes and then I'll make it to my destination in Spokane. So that pretty much takes all the range anxiety of having an EV. If you're not sure if you're gonna make it to your destination, put your destination in the navigation system and then uh, Tesla and then will get your back and make sure you get there. And it's also good to navigate to the supercharger anyways, even if you know where it is, because it will preheat the battery uh, for uh, faster charging. A lot of those people you saw on the news in Chicago that were getting stuck at superchargers, they weren't preheating the battery. So the battery is really cold. When the battery is really cold, it's not gonna charge fast. So by preheating the battery, warming the battery up, it's gonna charge a lot faster. Okay, <laughs> now this is the end of our video. Thanks so much for watching. Hope to see you soon and have a wonderful day.